interesting technology sent to one of my friends not too long ago. And I think the intention was to poke fun that Lustre was, you know, kind of old fashioned and not as cool and happening as this, you know, recently new technology. Um, but to me, you know, I think, you know, the fact that Lustre's been around the block a few times is actually one of, you know, pretty impressive that um, despite, you know, over a 20 year period, because um, it has, it was actually 20 years this summer since the first commit to the Lustre repository, um, it's continued to evolve and grow and stuck around despite you know, all the things that have changed in that time in the hardware sector. So uh, in fact our uh, CTO of the division I'm in, um, I should have probably explained the WAM Cloud division at DDN, uh, we came across recently uh, through uh, an acquisition, we've been previously at Intel, um, and this all goes back, I've had to abridge my slides a bit because I have a shorter window, but. Um, Basically 10 years ago, you know, up until that point, it was just a single organization where all the engineers were and all the Lustre activity happened. And then 10 years ago, uh, through an acquisition, things shifted a bit and we've had a, a greater diversity of organizations getting involved in Lustre development because the, the copyright got polluted like the Linux kernel and you know, basically it's GPL version two. This, is, this has meant that Lustre has you know, survived these organizational changes and, um, but despite that, the core Lustre engineering team has stuck together and does you know, a lot of the sort of more complex in-depth work, but the code is there and is available for others to do work on whatever their speci speciality is. So you know, this is actually these, this list of all these major releases over the years. Uh, the timeline on this uh, is the 1.8 at the top was 10 years ago, where there was a single organization, and now the 2.13 release, which is RC1 is in testing at the moment and hopefully will be out by the end of the month. Uh, we have 25 different organizations who, who participated in that. Um, so uh, this is the OpenSFS, which is the Lustre Community Organization roadmap for uh, this on Lustre.org at the moment. Uh, you can see the 2.13 release I just mentioned, probably the highlights in that. Persistent client cache is uh, a feature which allows us to leverage fast local storage. So if you've got a certain source of workload where you're doing a lots of multi, you know, repeat reads of a, a large data set of small I.O., you can take advantage of the very fast local storage, uh, but then the results can be you know, kept back in the, um, the full na namespace afterwards. So that's something with AI and genomics workloads we found to be you know, very beneficial. Uh, and then overstriping again, this is one of those things that we've, we've adapted to as new technologies come out. Uh, we found with I.O. 500 uh, results, we noticed that um, with, uh, there was a limitation that had been totally sensible, you know, back, way back in the day, that you would only have one stripe per device, but as we started, the economics started making sense where people were having, you know, all flash file systems, you were able to actually have multiple stripes on the same device and get very large performance boosts from that. So those are things in 2.13, and then into next year and beyond, we have, you know, further evolutions, um, and probably, uh, stand out there with pool quotas, with you know, being able to, we already have quotas on project users and groups, adding pools into the mix, so if you do have you know, more expensive, more performance storage, you can basically make sure that one user doesn't use up all those resources. So, I mean, that's, uh, in terms of my team, we do host the community infrastructure, we do do a lot of the work on the community releases, and so most of the time at community events, that's what we focus on, but I just wanted to touch briefly on uh, some of the other activities that take place in my engineering group. Um, one of the things with coming into DDN, so we are closer, you know, we partner with DDN through all the organizations we've been in. I've been working on Lustre since 2006 um, through a number of different organizations. Uh, and part, DDN has always been one of our largest partners, but now we're a division within DDN. We you know, have quite close links to other engineering groups. We're able to get access to uh, you know, store, next generation storage before it's generally available and look to do optimization. So for example, the Lustre 2.12 release that we put out right at the end of last year, we had done a whole bunch of uh, performance optimizations for our A3i appliance, which was an all flash appliance, and we had found you know, all kinds of bottlenecks on flash, those all went back into the community Lustre releases, but the net result was that that particular targeted appliance was you know, the fastest it could be. Uh, on a similar note, one of the things we've, we've appreciated is in some of the new markets we're moving into, there's been a demand to have uh, better tools to manage the data on your file system. So one of the things that we've uh, developed is a framework uh, strat called, we're calling Stratagem, 
which basically allows you to have policies and uh, a, there's a very fast scanner, parallel scanning, which you can get very quick results based on those policies and then fire off actions. So in the Exascaler 5 release that just came out this summer, we have some early implementations, but the main work prior to that was the um, getting the uh, whole infrastructure in place, the framework in place that we can build out on and we'll continue to build out on 2020. So, so far in the summer we had the ability to have uh, hot pools, which is basically the idea you have a, uh, where you have um, you know, high performance storage and a cheaper, lower performance storage that you can uh, make best use of by uh, try, uh, you know, getting all the I.O. to occur on the fast storage and then keeping you know, within the same namespace it available on the sort of hard disk tier to get where you know, it makes more economic sense for data you know, accessing as quickly. Um, and then we are continuing over this coming year, we'll be looking to other use cases, copying to different file system targets and such like, again, and allowing for more sophisticated rules that you can, uh, you can specify as to the target files. Uh, one thing as well, that's, uh, there was a press release, um, I think yesterday, about a partnership we've had with NVIDIA and some very exciting results we've had there, a new technology they've just released called GPU Direct, which uh, allows you to get you know, big performance gains, and again, we've been using our A3i appliance there um, and done some work to um, fully utilize that and get good numbers. Um, I did want to just touch about other Lustre activities going on around um, at the conference, um, and highlighting red here in particular, there's a boff on today at 5.15, and that's an hour and a half long. We'll certainly go into a you know, whole range of different topics about Lustre in a lot more depth than this quick whiz through here. And then just to say that the, um, the date has been announced for the Lustre User Conference, the annual uh, in the US, um, which will be in the Bay Area in June this year, so a little bit later than usual. And there we are, so that's my brief presentation. I think sitting there, you've done enough to get in the draw for the prize. <laughs>